Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and this month I'm covering sequencing in Reactor. In this video I'll show you how to create a nice little GUI for Sequencer. It's just, um, it looks better, it takes up less space, and it's easier to use than having uh, 16 knobs. So I find this to be a pretty great structure for a lot of different purposes. So let's take a look at how to make it. I want to begin by fixing a small bug in our first sequencing video where occasionally on resetting the MIDI clock the first value of the sequencer didn't read out properly. This is easy enough to fix. I'm just going to use a start stop module with a value module. So what's going to happen here is whenever the MIDI clock gets reset it'll output a 1 from the start stop module which will trigger the value module which will trigger the sequencer at a position of 0 and we'll read out the first part of the sequence that way so this is a simple fix and now that that's taken care of let's get to work on our multi slider Multi slider is created using a mouse area writing information into a multi display module. I'm going to use the X value of the mouse area to control the index of the multi display, so I'm going to give it a range from 1 to 16 with a step size of 1. Next, we can load up a multi display. And the problem we're going to have with these two modules working together is that neither one can save data in snapshots. So we're not going to be able to save the data that we're drawing onto the multi-display. In order to fix this, I'm going to insert a snap value array between the two modules. It's going to take its x value as its index and the y value for the right. So now we'll be able to store and recall all of the mouse area data with a snapshot. So the index of the snap value array is going to control the index of our multi display, and it will also control the x values of where we're drawing on the multi display. So I'm going to use an order module, make sure that we set the index before we set the x values. We're going to set the object type to negative 1, and this is going to draw bars on the screen. So it's basically a filled rectangle. You can look at all the types just by hovering over the object input of the multi display. And we're using the index to control the x values of the bars that we're drawing as well. So we want to set the x range in the multi display to accommodate these values. So I'm going to change the range from 0 to 16. So x1 will equal the index minus 1, and x2 will simply be equal to the index. And once we have the x values set up, the y values are very easy to deal with. We can leave y1 equal to 0, and then we'll set y2 with the output from the snap value array. Finally, I'm just going to give the R input a value of 1, so we can draw all the bars as red. And we're pretty much done at this point in time with the multi-slider, but we need to be careful. There's a few things that we need to make sure to do in properties. So first of all, we want to make the multi-display have 16 objects. And we also need to set the size of the snap value array to 16 as well. And if you don't do these things, you can get some really weird errors. So if you have problems making setups like this, it's probably something stupid like that. What's really easy to forget and um, can be pretty frustrating. I've had it happen to me uh, many times. All right, so now that we've got this all wired up, uh, I want to check it out in properties and make sure that everything's working okay. And of course you want to line the mouse area up so that it's directly on top of the multi display module. And now we can draw our values into the multi display. 
And one thing I want to change is just the size of these modules is a little awkward in this square shape. It's, it would be nice to have a little more room along the x-axis. And the y-axis is really not quite as important. Alright, so everything's working with our multi-slider just fine. And the last thing we have to do is connect all of these values to our multiplex module. So in order to do this, we only need one module. I'm going to use a router with a single input and multiple outputs. And then we can get rid of these 16 knobs altogether, which will be nice. So we'll give the router 16 outputs, which means it's going to take a position input ranging from 0 to 15 which is also the range of our X1 input to the multi-display. So we can um, wire that up and then uh, simply wire the output of the snap value array into the input of the router. And then we can simply wire it up, connecting the numbers to their partners in the multiplex module. So this is just a great little structure that's really simple to put together and it can be expanded upon in a lot of ways. One thing I like to add is a highlight position so you can tell which step of the sequence is currently active um, and a number output so that as you're editing the most recent value is shown in a numeric display which just makes it easier when you're working with uh, certain types of signals. Alright, so I just want to test that everything works, which it seems to do. Alright, once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com, and thanks for watching.